Patrick. Yeah. What's up, Wada? Well, that was the previously on for last week's show. Yes. But last week, you <laughs> played the previously on for two weeks earlier. Yes, Wada. So there was a rerun. There were two weeks where the same previously on happened. Yeah. There's one week in the timeline. It's gone forever, Wada. Gone forever! If people want to watch it, they're going to have to find the show online and catch up with it. But yeah, it's it's gone forever. But what about the entire lineup of shows on Planet Scum? I mean, you can probably find most of them on YouTube, Wada. Most of them on YouTube? Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh! The people agree with Watto. Watto's ring light seems to be permanently dead, and somehow the end result of it is that Watto seems more pale than ever. The palest of the blues. Uh... Hello, everybody. Welcome to the warm-up of the George Lucas talk show. I am Watto, the flying space crew slash warm-up comic slash announcer slash sidekick. Who here has ever been to a live TV show taping before? If you have, change your avatar to the Tasmanian devil looking badass with a backwards baseball cap and that's type good. in clap, 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 clap. That's what, gonna, Patrick? That's going to take too long, Watto. Give him something easier. Okay. If you have been to a live TV show taping before, do an emoji of a hockey puck. And if you have been to a taping of the George Lucas talk show before, well, that means you've been to a live TV show taping. So I want you to do the hockey puck and the hockey stick. What if I decide this hockey week? That this is hockey week on the George Lucas talk show. Maybe it's hockey week. We will try that out. Folks, uh, we've been doing the show virtually for almost a year. What a fucking nightmare. But it means that we can't hear you laughing, crying, and applauding. So you need to use the live chat to tell us what you like. But also, you might want to go on to social media channels to spread the word to other people. And the way you do that is with hashtag. Let's see the hashtag. Oh, boy. I every week feel like I'm ready for the hashtags until they show up on screen. Hashtag Amerabecca Gris Trisdale. Let me try that again. I wonder why I struggled with this one. Hashtag Amerabecca Gris Dolly. Rolls off the tongue. Hashtag Jar Jar is the key and peel to all of us. All of this. That's good. Apparently I can't read anymore. Hashtag all that's no moon. That. It's not a functional hashtag. It has an apostrophe in it. That ruins the hashtag. It won't it won't work. Hashtag Ameridon Grabesi. Grabisi. Grabesi. Bicy. Grabisi, Wado. Grabisi. It's very easy. Ameridon Grabisi. Oh, easy? <laughs> then why don't you say these remaining two? Sure. Uh we got okay, so we got Ameridon Grabisi, Obi Don Kabizi. And great kid, don't get cocky. Pretty good. God Watto. damn it! They're pretty good. They're pretty good, Watto. Start the fucking show.
George Lucas. Hello, I'm George Lucas, creator of Star Wars. Welcome to the George Lucas Talk Show. Hello, Watto. How are you? Hello, George. Yeah. Uh, it's very good to see you once again. Uh, oh, it's Sunday, good to Sunday see nights you. don't feel complete uh, without uh, seeing you. I agree. Uh, sorry if I seem distracted. I'm just trying to find if there's a way for me to watch the Critics' Choice Awards live. Or those tonight? Yeah. I guess we're officially uh, in the thick of awards season, aren't we? Yes! Everyone trying to bring home some hardware. Right. Trying to nab a date with the most elusive bachelor in Hollywood, Oscar. Oscar. Mm. Well, he's uh, he is indeed uh, hard to catch. Yes. Uh, sometimes you get an honorary one, and those are just as good yeah, as the ones, you know. Yeah, arguably better. Better, I think, better because they're the others aren't honorary. There's no honor in them. If anything, you could argue yeah. they're dishonorable because. Yeah, the offense towards the people who lose. I know, don't call a competitive. I don't call a competitive Oscar an Oscar. I call it a scoundrel because it is without honor. Yeah, I I, I like that. Wow. Oh, hello, Patrick. Thank you for coming. Hi, guys. In, uh, without yeah. just 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 come right in in the middle of the conversation. I just yeah. wanted to be a part of it. You know. Yeah, yeah. I, that's clear. You, that's. That's the subtext now rendered as text, Patrick. Do you know that Daniel Day Lewis has won three scoundrels, Patrick? I, I didn't know that. I didn't know three that. Three scoundrels. Yeah, no, that's impressive. You know, uh, not a hot take to say he's a good actor. He is. Why do I, I do want to? I do want to shout out that the the Rachel Zegler fans are in the chat tonight again. Yeah, yeah. We welcome them. We welcome. We them. welcome them. Rachel is here. Is, not here tonight, is, but she is here in spirit. And I she, love that they're back. very happy that we're very happy that you're part of the Georgie Porgies. Yeah, we welcome you with open arms. Is there a name for the Zegler High? Aren't they so Zegler? Are they Zegheads? I like Zegheads. I think I want to make it clear. Zeglians? Are they Maybe. Zeglians? They're Zeglians. Yeah, it's not our job to rewrite their story. Okay. Right now, if George Lucas talk show fans are Georgie Porgies. And Zegler fans are Zeglians, are Zeglians who watch the George Lucas talk show, Zegly Peglies. <laughs> Possibly. Uh, yeah. A thing to be discussed. Uh, but but who better to discuss it with than our guest tonight? Yes. Great transition, very professional. Now, one of our guests has already given me their intro. The other guest, I, I encourage him to type his introduction into the private chat right now and as an announcer i will read it live on the show mm -hmm. we, we will not change a word of it yes. we'll not change a word and i like this this is how you know our first guest tonight is a comedy writer she gave me alts <laughs> i got i got an alt on the intro but unfortunately the deal is i read verbatim so i'm reading all of it all the alts here we go Grogu's and Gragras. Our first guest on this show, you know them from the shortest time as head writer of the Tonight Show ever. <laughs> if, if you want a joke. Or, or, as a multi-hyphenate, very big in show business, so many things in development, really you wouldn't understand them if I told you. And to be clear, that is not the joke. Mm -mm. And finally, the final text in this train, doing this podcast, we will get food, exclamation point. Got to follow up on that one. Grogu's and Gragras, please welcome to the George Lucas Talk Show, Rebecca Dresden! Hello, hello. Hello. Hear me? I'm in such a weird setup. Yeah. And you then are, you, are in the, you are in the field. You are reporting live from the field. Yeah. I'm in Burbank. Doing very important showbiz. Yes. And you're trying stopped. to you're you're trying to take the Tonight Show back for Jay. You're out there in Burbank. It's time. You see right through me. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I didn't want to give it out this early. Wado, the Jay, second intro Jay, is in the private chat too. The, oh, great. The, and if, the second text was not supposed to be for you, Wado. That's <laughs> what I figured. For the person I'm picking up at the airport who was like, 
the second I get back, yeah, we're gonna have pizza. Mm -hmm. Sure, but you you should know people have referred to the George Lucas talk show as the worst podcast ever. <laughs> So it was confusing, and also uh, Watto did get food. Oh, see, you're way ahead of me. I'm trying to like yeah. some kind of like crazy. It looks this, good. This is terrible. I'm so sorry. Becky, uh, how Becky, how, how how far are you from uh, Disney headquarters where you are right now in Burbank? Close. I'm up it. I, if I'm oh. not mistaken, that is where the deed to Star Wars is currently located. The, the, well, that was what I was trying to grab before I got oh, If you could get that, if we could pull a heist during this show, that would be like, so great. Well, yeah, I think I our, our... turned off of like gate three, like the whatever gate has all the the uh, the building with all the dwarves. Yeah. Where, yeah. You have, where you have meetings that have nothing to do with Disney. Uh, and then I ran out of time and just parked randomly next to a park so I could do the shittiest podcast. That's uh, what we like to call it. We are. On what I'll say platform we're on. <laughs> a a planet, uh, planets come dot live. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I will say our second guest who I'm about to introduce might be able to help us in locating where the deed to Star Wars is. He might know. Folks, what is there to say? I, of course, have written a check for myself where I have to read whatever the intro is verbatim. And I think the guest typed it in their voice, not realizing that I'm back into a corner here. I have to say it as they wrote it. <laughs> Folks, I am the other Don Bees. Please welcome to the George Lucas talk show, Don Bees! Hey, everyone. Wanna change your change your uh, Chiron. Yeah. Yep. Hey Don, how are you? Hello, how are you? good. I have such an honor to be here. And George, I haven't seen you in so long. It's good oh, to see you again. I miss you, Don. It's so great to see you. I see you've got you've got R2 there. I do. I do. I got a little yeah. R2 here. I'll I'll keep mine's it bigger. We, 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 yep. Yeah, oh, I don't doubt. I don't doubt that, but see, I can make mine appear even uh, yeah. with yours. With movie magic, once movie again. Magic. <laughs> this makes yours look so tiny, and yet <laughs> because of the tiny little art work Don has done, you are this is my telephone. <laughs> yeah, Don, how when did you build that R two? Because you made that one yourself. Uh yeah, this I just built last year actually. This oh wow! Is actually, yeah. it was built. It was built for a friend, so. Um, uh, it's not going to be mine. It's not going to live here, sure. but he's just hanging out here with me for the time being. So. Yeah. Now, now Don, is that legal what you did? <laughs> I'm I'm sure it is. I <laughs> didn't. I'm sure. Did you just? I, I just sure worried, hope so. I'm worried you confess to a crime that you're making bootleg R2s for your friends. <laughs> I don't, I approve of it because the heroes of Star Wars are rebels. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. Uh, can, you can know, you Don, turn, can you turn I, R2 I, on for us? Uh, yeah. How do you turn an R2 on? Well, <laughs> if, anyone, if anyone's going to know. Very good. <laughs> Look at him. Very good. Ugh. Can I Don, I will, I will say I think one of my best qualities is that I make very fast friends. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll leave like, it you want to jump in here on this, on this bracket? Yeah, I was, was going to say, you know, we've only just met. But... <laughs> And at what point does one get to request a ham? Yeah, that's yeah. the question. Or two from Don. Yeah. yeah. We'll see. Uh, how good? How long have you known the friend that you're making? That you've made this R two for. And are they still expecting it? <laughs> <laughs> um, how uh, how long? The uh, let's see, it's uh, over ten years or so. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Set your expectations accordingly, folks. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, 2031, Becky and, and other Don B, Don B's. <laughs> now, Don, it. you uh, you've played a couple of iconic characters. I have. Because you've done a lot of behind the scenes stuff, but you're the second person to play one of the most iconic characters who has been on this show. Do you know what character I'm talking about? I don't know. <laughs> Indiana Jones, Don. Oh. Cool. 
yeah. Indiana Jones. Did you talk to, you had Julian Glover on, right? We did have Julian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. we also had Corey Carrier on, who was the young, young. Oh, young Indy, yeah. The youngest, yeah, yeah, yeah. the youngest of all Indies so far. Yeah. Um, I had I had a funny thing. I, I, I met Julian once. I, I, I was invited to do a convention in Germany. And, um, and Julian and I were on stage together or no, he, he was, he was there at the convention, but mm-hmm. we were on stage together and they were t- asking me about stuff I had done. And, uh, I had to explain the scene I was in. I said, yeah, well, Julian and I have this connection. I said, because, you know, we were both in Indiana Jones and the last crusade. Mm-hmm. I said, of course he had the much bigger part. I just was like, uh, I filled, I filled the screen for <laughs> behind, but I, I, I'm sitting there in front of a bunch of German fans and realizing that I have to talk about a scene where Hitler is signing a book <laughs> and I, and, and in front of the, uh, you know, and, and my, I like, I totally like, <laughs> like tried to think I, I'm going through my mind really quick. Like how can I say Adolf Hitler in front of a bunch of German fans <laughs> and try to like minimize it. So yeah. I kind of like just swallowed and, and, and you know, and when we're signing the grail diary. Um, so your, your, your Indy's body when he hands it to Hitler to sign it, right? Is that what the case was? You guys filmed that later on? Yeah. The story goes that they, they never got the insert shot of, it was Michael Sheard. I think mm-hmm. it was that played, uh, actually, no, it was Michael. Michael was at that, that convention as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what the connection was. That was my connection that I was telling. Uh, and and um, the guy who played Hitler was at the German convention. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How long was that okay. line? <laughs> yeah. He was. A, he's a bar- he. A, he really really funny guy. He he mm-hmm. passed away unfortunately. He's the he's Admiral Ozil in Empire Strikes Back. He's the guy yeah. that gets choked. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But. When uh, it refreshed my memory, when, when for the uh, for the Hitler book signing scene, that was was that in Liverpool, where where that uh, that sequence was filmed. Was that the in, filming in Liverpool? No, well, where we shot it was at ILM. Right. Um, so when you're doing the pickups, but the original was in Liverpool, right? The, original- the Liverpool, I think it was uh, probably just Pinewood or Elstree or wherever they were shooting the <laughs> studio stuff. Right. Wow. Um. But yeah, they the story goes that they didn't get the insert shot of Hitler signing the diary, and so they reshot it. They shot it at at Industrial Light and Magic, where I was working at the time, and they shot it the first time. And uh, they it, he wrote best wishes Adolf Hitler, or the or the story goes is that he spelled he spelled Adolf wrong. He spelled it with a <laughs> ph or, instead of an f. Great. And so they had to shoot it again. And I was working. It was a Saturday. I was actually working on what we call Donovan's destruction, which was uh, the w- when Julian Glover turns to dust. Mm-hmm. And we were making these animatronic puppets. And and I was we were setting up for for a shot. And the effects supervisor came over and said, "Who's not busy right now?" And I raised my hand. And he says, "Come with me." And we walk, walked over to one of the insert stages. And they were setting up to do the shot. I had no idea what it was. And, 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 um, and the guy, it was all crew members. It was a guy that, you know, one of the lighting guys and, and the camera guy and, and me and the effects supervisor mm-hmm. and a camera assistant. And the camera assistant was going to be where the indie jacket. It was in a, actually, it wasn't an indie jacket. It was a, a German soldier jacket. Yeah. And, um, and he couldn't fit in it. So then they put me in it. So. Cool. That's a short list of people who again. <laughs> What's that? Can you just tell that whole story again? I got I got booted <laughs> off. It's, it's something really sad that happened over here. We'll we'll fill you in. No, I got, um, I got both of it. I'm I'm a little starstruck, frankly. I, I yeah, I'm a, I'm honored to be on here with you. I mean, you you've got some amazing uh, credits and. Thank you. He's right. He's right, Becky. It's true. You're right. Well, you created the um, the set of my entire childhood. So thank you for that. <laughs> well, you're welcome. <laughs> I, I in um, in a, in like fifth grade or sixth grade or something, I did a project, a school project about movie special effects. And at that time, really, the only thing to talk about was ILM. <laughs> So I, I have a little bit of a like my my young heart is is very very uh, excited to to get to talk to you and meet you and and I'm I'm pretty nerdy and and uh, 
and I, I dork out quite a bit about this kind of stuff. So, uh, so Becky, very, very you were cool. on the George Lucas stage show years ago for the uh, Willow episode. Which Willow is go -Go was the was the episode we were celebrating the film Willow, and you were a, you were a, you're a big Willow fan. Huge. Yeah, and and I remember you mentioning in that show that in college, you and your your friend and later collaborator Jordan Peele created a card game based off of objects in the Star Wars universe. Am That's I misremembering this? That is correct. Well, yes, I will give Jordan most of the credit as he's as he's a, a in addition to all of the other things that he he does um, medium well. He's also a great. Uh, illustrator um, but yeah we had sort of a card game with with like any prop you could think of from the Star Wars universe um, that we would then like play gin with or like put <laughs> together like you know oh, like I have three lightsabers and four you know death sticks Amidala headsets yeah but it's gin George yeah right <laughs> So it's three of a kind or, you know, whatever that meant to us. But, yeah, that was pretty dorky. Because so you had to come up with the numerical value that would be sort of attributed. No, it was more like uh, like things. Gotcha, gotcha, mm -hmm. gotcha. Mm -hmm. okay. so it's like, oh, I have, you know, young Anakin, Darth Vader, and uh, Darth Vader helmetless dying in the corner. Mm -hmm. so that it's like, like poetry. Epic. <laughs> Thank you. It rhymes. It rhymes. It rhymes. Exactly. Yeah. Becky, do you I remember? I, I feel bad. I feel like I'm outing Jordan. With <laughs> really unfair. Unfortunately, he has to come on the show himself in order to combat these vicious rumors you are starting. There is no I'm other sure, option. I'm sure it'll get back to him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you remember but, the first time you saw Star Wars, Becky? I don't. I don't. I mean, my brother was 10 years older than me, so I'm sure it was just like on yeah. when I was born. Mm -hmm. But I was going to say Willow has a major ILM milestone in it. Yeah. Huge. Morphin. Morphin. Yeah. Morphin. Morphin with an apostrophe. Morphin. <laughs> morphin. <laughs> straight Morphin. Mighty Morphin. We, we, we straight Morphin. Yeah. Um, now, Don, you... I believe you play a character in episodes one through six, right? You have you are in episodes one through six, correct? Uh, I didn't I didn't wind up in three anywhere, but yeah. In, oh but God. you did, you worked on R two though. That's well, count. yeah, but I wasn't uh, the other ones. I all all well with the special editions. I made I made some sort of appearance in yeah. in all the other ones, but yeah. Don, I I will say that's an esteemed club to be in. Only the best. <laughs> Characters were not in Revenge of the Sith. <laughs> Anthem and Attack were kind of where things were really jazzing up, you know? Yeah. Three was when we had to just pare it down. It's it's almost it's almost like a bottle episode in a sense. It, it, we just like, just down to the bare essentials. Right. Not too many characters. You know, the, uh, Phantom and Clones are really a chance for the ensemble to shine. Mm -hmm. By the yeah. time we got to like, let's just, we got to pare this down. We don't have room for the kind of antics because we're you know for one thing we're going to add two babies at the end of this so that that knocks yeah. out two characters right there i know we didn't even get to go on location we just you know we just shot in the studios yeah. and at ilm yeah. and that was that so. yeah if you i mean need if, out, outdoor stuff just go out on the patio go out in the parking lot walk oh, around you don't even go outside we just went to green screen everything yeah. green screen. it's a way to do it i always felt about um the third one uh, uh revenge of the sith i always mm -hmm. felt it did feel very reeled in Mm -hmm. Yeah, you need Watto. You need Watto. Almost an indie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's I, like a Mike Lee film. You know, it's like this chamber piece with the skeleton crew of a cast, and they're all just sort of bouncing off each other. But it's really about it. this very slight interpersonal dynamic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nuanced. Yeah, what, it's like uh, two friends have a fight on a volcano planet. Mm -hmm. Small can't. Can't get more simple than that. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the most uh, difficult location that you had to go on, Don, for those movies? Uh, probably just Tunisia because it was hot. It yeah. got up to, I think, 128 in the shade at one point. Um, so, uh, yeah. 
that that was probably just uh, from a comfort comfort standpoint. But, yeah, I mean, Mustafar must be even more hot. <laughs> I didn't go to Mustafar. That's humid. <laughs> Mustafar is humid. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It was a dry it's heat. Dry heat. Yeah. It's a yes. Different thing. Tunisia. Have you been back, Don, to Tunisia, where those uh, where the house is still there? Uh, I I believe they were. Um, I as some fans went out and restored them. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, the yeah no I I, I was, there's two thousand it was uh, September of two thousand that I was there shooting <laughs> there was really no reason to go back. <laughs> I don't yeah. think I'd go back there <laughs> yeah yeah uh, people, people go from all over the world I know it, like well they do a lot like of I it yeah they they i they, i know i know i've known people that do the pilgrimages out to like even uh norway for you know where they shot empire strikes back and yeah so. a lot more people go to where jedi was filmed though just northern california, northern california. california. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's nice there you know it's yeah. yeah no one ever talks about that but people go to northern california all the time <laughs> Don, uh, you, I feel like you go to the, a lot of the conventions that happen. Uh, Not as much anymore. I, I was yeah. up until about 2007 or so. Yeah. They stopped inviting me. I don't know. <laughs> were those, uh, do you have any fun memories from those? Anyone you got to meet that you were really excited by getting to see? Well, the, there was usually like a old home week, you know, because it would be people that we hadn't seen, you mm -hmm. know. Um, mm -hmm. So uh so those were were that was what was fun about it i had a funny story in, in this i think it was attack is attack of the clones the well, convention whatever convention happened around attack of the clones which would have been 2003 i guess 2002 no it would have been 2002 mm -hmm. um because uh i i i grew up in chicago and the the convention was in indianapolis and uh um, this is going to sound horrible, but my, my mother passed away about a week and a half before the, the convention. And, um, you know, I, I, I was debating whether I was going to still go to the convention. I was in Chicago for, for the funeral and everything. And, and I, I'm at the funeral home and one of the funeral directors, a young guy comes up and and is asking how i'm doing he's being very polite very respectful and everything and he goes so um you worked on star wars <laughs> <laughs> and i like yeah and he goes oh, yeah I, i'm a big star wars fan and i'm like oh really oh that's cool and i says yeah you going to the convention he says, well i'm thinking of going to the convention next week and i and i says yeah me too i said I'll, I'll see how my dad's doing and everything and then well as it turned out i went to the convention <laughs> And and my brother and his family joined joined me at the convention, and we're walking down the street to the convention hall, and here comes a funeral director in full Jedi garb, <laughs> <laughs> and say, "Oh hey, <laughs> how are you? <laughs> oh so great, mom. You know, mom, mom's been buried a week now. You know, so." Have yeah. you run into him since, or was that the no, last? No, that's the only time. Uh, I don't know if I would remember who he was. It was, it was, it was amusing, and my mom would have got a big kick out of it. So. Yeah. Do you think? Uh, do you think that when he asked you if you were going to the convention, he then had to like play the scenario over in his head and decide whether he was going to go with <laughs> or not? I would be. I think like, he was going regardless. I think he was. Yeah. Uh, you know, he <laughs> he's a pretty rabid fan. I think. I'd like in my head, I'd be like, "Oh boy, here we go." <laughs> <laughs> he he was really excited about going because he was like he started getting really animated talking to me about it and saying, "Yeah, you know how much he enjoys these things," and which I I think is great. But it just, it was just it was just odd. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, it's. I I bet that happens more often than you'd think. You just don't know about it. You know, <laughs> yeah. you have this particular insight where it came up. But I I bet at a lot of those conventions, you'd be surprised what the real professions of the people dressed as Jedi are. I bet there's a lot of a lot of uh, uh, interesting... Funeral comedy. directors. There are funeral directors. It's 90% <laughs> yeah. funeral directors. That's right. Yeah. Very Don, what was the... I mean, we worked on so many films together. Was there one that was... Was it all just a wild fun ride, or was there any particular film that you thought was a high point of your experience? 
enjoyment satisfaction wise from uh from a uh, fun standpoint i enjoyed working on episode two the most uh only because we got to uh i got to take my whole family to um australia and then um and then i went on on location to tunisia and italy and um spain and and london and then back to london so uh, and then do, uh, when I we were there for the pickups for episode three, you'll remember, mm -hmm. it was my birthday, uh, the last day of shooting, and so everyone sang happy birthday to me, and I got a card from everybody. So that it was really it was it, it, the last shot of the day was uh, R two and three PO watching the wedding of Anakin and Padme. Except they, Anakin and Padme, although they were there, they weren't there because R two and three PO were being shot on uh, blue screen, and um, and so everyone. The assistant director said, that's a wrap. And ladies and gentlemen, it's Don's birthday. And everyone sang to me. And then they, we broke open champagne. So so that was very uh, Don, it's a very touching story. I just want to circle back when you were listing the reasons you liked episode two the most. You forgot to mention that Watto wears a little hat. That's right. You know, I enjoyed, I actually got to sit in your hut when when we were doing episode two when anakin and padme come to see you yeah and r2 was joined them and i was sitting i was sitting in your hut um operating r2 yeah i i airbnb the shit out of that thing now <laughs> business really dropped in the pandemic but for a while it was really working it's like even a, at that time there are a lot of there is a lot of indication that people were, were camping out there <laughs> yeah yeah that since you got the hot tub, Watto, you had a hot tub. <laughs> well, I call it I call it a hot tub. It's everything in the house is like a Star Wars pun. You don't think that's funny? I, this doesn't mean I don't think it's funny. It's just a general rating of. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I like the hot tub. I do want to ask Watto. You said everything in your house is a Star Wars pun. What else is in your house? Yeah, sure. let's go around the room. Yeah. Great. I mean, once again, I'm not there right now. Of course, I currently live in my apartment in Dakota. I live directly below Yoko Ono. This is my hut from filming, which is now Airbnb. So let me just rattle off a bunch of quick puns. Uh, my my TV set, of course, I call it the Boba set. <laughs> Great. That's one item. That's a quick one just right off the top of the head. Uh -huh. Uh I would say, uh, you know, oh, yeah. God, where to even start? You had the bookshelf. Uh, you had a bookshelf, Watto. What's that called? You seem so confident about this bookshelf. Well, no, I just know that you. I mean, you had a name for everything, and I just yeah. remember the bookshelf in there. So yeah. I don't know. If you it, I don't understand Watto, why you're leading with the bookshelf. Watto, is that the? I've never asked this. Watto, is the the sofa that you're on? Does that fold out, or is that something that would uh, would work as like a? Could you ever take a nap on that sofa? I could, but once again, you're describing things in my current apartment, not the hut. But go. I was on. just wondering if every now and then you had a bad feeling about this. <laughs> I do have sometimes a bad feeling about this. I say at the hut. I mean, because here in New York, there's not a lot of uh, greenness, right? I live in an yeah. apartment. I yeah. don't have a backyard or anything. Uh, but I did like to uh, to plant quite a bit at the hut. So I did have a den garden. No. 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 What do you? Oh, and you thank you. I, I thought that was funny. Yeah. Sleep on <laughs> in the hut. I say again. What do you sleep on in the hut? Oh, just a futon. A futon. Yeah. Becky, I have a question. How do you think? Uh, uh, I'm sorry. A uh, uh, boba futon. Go on. <laughs> Becky, how do you think uh, female hiker number two from Enough Said is handling the pandemic? Uh, great question. Yeah. Um, and thank you for bringing that up because it's the, the, you know, Don, I'm sure you have stories, but when I was female hiker number two mm -hmm. in enough said, um, oh my God, where to even begin? Mm -hmm. We were shooting in Malibu and I had to walk about 50 feet down mm -hmm. the beach in Malibu and it would took about three hours of shooting. So, you know, talk about a storied saga. <laughs> I'm with you, Don. I get it. Um, actually, that was one experience I had where I was like, wow, do I not want to be an actor? 
Cause I can't even do that. I'm so I, I'm just, I, it's not in my bones. It's, it's not, I, 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 it was like, I truly had to walk down the beach and I could, I was, I was exhausted. I was like hanging out with Julia Lloyd Dreyfus and Catherine Keener. And I was just like, I'm exhausted. I'm miserable. I, I don't want to do it. I'm not built for it. So the thought that people like have, to, whenever I see someone in a movie that like runs mm -hmm. or like does anything, I'm just, it blows my mind. Yeah. Well, I mean, is um, old or like hot. Yeah. Any, literally anything. Th those are all things that are, that it used to be, that's if you shoot things in an old fashioned way, but you could easily do motion capture where you would walk for a few frames and then we can replicate it. We've got the movements and you, you don't have that's to do as much hiking. If I had been directing enough said, you would have had to hike for about 30 seconds and we'd have it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally. No, be, right. You could have put her on a dolly and pushed her and then just, you know, with a guy with a green suit. And then, yeah. Uh, yeah. Or we'd get someone who really yeah. likes to hike, have them hike around the room, then put your face on them. You know? That's, that would have been great. Mm -hmm. There was a, um, an amazingly, a, a really intricate, amazing uh, special effects scene in enough said that was cut. Uh, oh because it didn't belong in a small Nicole Hall of Center indie movie. I would <laughs> no, was, I would say with all with all respect to it's a fine film, but if I just not even seeing the scene, I would say that the rest of the film was out of step with that scene and that they should have followed yeah, whatever that was. That's correct. Well, in the uh, special edition, they're putting that scene back. Yeah. Yeah. So um, do you, so you think she's wearing a mask? She's staying home or she's just going out in and trying two. to live her life still. Two? We call her two. Two, yeah, two. Yeah. Yeah. They do. She's she's pretty uh, you know, she she's she follows the rules, but she did, you know, she had a socially distant, you know, for mm -hmm. the fly that, you mm -hmm. know, think that all sloppy, but generally yeah. so you, you uh, and Don have that in common that you've both played a two in uh in a major motion picture, an R2 okay. and a hiker two. The connections don't stop. Yeah. Oh. Wait, Don, Destiny. I, I have a question for Don because these questions mm -hmm. about the literal smallest part I've ever had in any <laughs> ever have to stop. Um, Don, I know that you've been with ILM for a long time. Is there a specific like area that you focus in and thing that you do? I mean, obviously you've worked extensively with R2, but um, do you? is there a thing that you specifically uh specialize in i guess is the question well i was I, i'm no longer there i haven't been there since um 2007 i think it was oh, well, I but, but um i was a model maker actually there okay. uh, i started out actually creature maker i did m making creatures and monsters and all that sort of stuff and then phased that kind of stuff that work started getting taken up by digital effects so right. um moved into model making but that's the that's the cool stuff. I mean, it's like the was. Cool, I'm acting. I'm acting somewhat normal, but I'm very like psyched about this. Uh oh, what happened, Patrick? Patrick left. I think he's embarrassed about asking you so many questions about it. <laughs> yeah, you just <laughs> roasted him. He's digging deeper into my very extensive IMDb. Yeah, that's what he loves to do. I feel like we we yeah. we glossed over it very fast. But Don, can you give the full list? of the different characters that you performed across the films? Um, let's see. Well, episode one, I was just the pod, a guy walking up uh, the in the pod race. I was walking up hey, the stairs. Don't say just. That's yes. a very important character. Yeah. And I had to walk upstairs, so I can feel your pain, Becky. And I, before, you know, and before we get to these, I want to request from the fans who are watching this, because we get a lot of fan art, someone should get to work on drawing a portrait of all the bees. <laughs> all the, all, all the uh, and and let's have it say at the top, uh, IMDb. <laughs> I yeah, I am DB. You know, yeah. they yeah. named that that website after me and everything. <laughs> IMDb. Yeah, but we should get a portrait of all the characters hanging out with you. We did uh, get one, George. We did get one piece of fan art that I want to bring in. This is uh, we're calling this the Book of Don. <laughs> the Book of Don. And we got Becky in there. We got Don. We got George. Me. And that is the vibe. That's they've captured the vibe of this show one hundred percent. Yes. Uh, I like that. Yeah. So so we got the guy. The guy at the pod race. Pod race. Pod race. Yeah. Ep episode two was um, 
uh, I was wor working with Anthony Daniels, played C-3PO, and I s joked one day to him, I said, I said I, well, it wasn't a joke. It was a, <laughs> it was a blatant, like, hey, we should do this. Uh, we should be extras in the big bars uh, scene. Uh, yeah. the, uh, and, um, and he said, oh, yes, we should. And then he got the really nice part with all the close-ups, and I'm just walking in the background. So I, you see me very briefly looking uh walking past anakin behind anakin and uh and yeah, Obi -Wan. No, but that's your it's a it's the dynamic that you're looking for you know like he's the pacino and you're the duvall yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. you're in the yeah. background but it's you're you're what makes the moment you're what helps ground the moment you got kinetic energy in that scene my friend <laughs> <laughs> um, um let's see had a monster in um willow I didn't work on Willow. No, I was working at another effects company during huh. during Willow. But um, yeah, I used yeah. to take care of the Lucasfilm archives. So I used to I, I I organized all the Willow props when they came in. I was there when they when they came in. So I, and I, be I believe Don, like you're Don is downselling what he did. You were the first archive. It was technically guy. the second and the oh, fourth. Okay. Oh, okay. But you were there the very forward. early. The, clone, the clones and the hope, as we call you. <laughs> yeah. I was only the I, I was only the even numbered archives. <laughs> archives. Yeah. yeah. But you were there very early, and you were. Who was three? Yeah. Who 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 took who took the that job in between when you were two and four? Nelson Hall, who's another Boba Fett. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And it's like a very good friend of mine. On the archives, tidying stuff up. So then, <laughs> so then, in A New Hope for the special edition, you were. Uh, uh, yeah, it's a bunch of well. The, so when Han Solo turns the corner into uh, and and the Death Star, and he and they added more um, stormtroopers and mm -hmm. Imperial officers, I'm like every sixth stormtrooper, <laughs> wow. and and every sixth Imperial officer that's mm -hmm. higher up up the thing. Um, I, is there? Oh, I did. A, I puppeteered a, a a replacement puppet from yeah. There you go, Catwall. Yeah. So the, the so the front, interestingly, where the turban in part of that thing is, the that's actually the other face. Mm -hmm. uh, Howie Weed, one of the guys I worked with, uh, sculpted that, and he made it two two faces. So the front, the part that's got the turban on, has one face, and that has the the back of the head is the other face, and it's called Ketwall, which is backwards is low tech. So. <laughs> And it's um, bring this guy's the other one, right? Yeah, there's the other one, yeah. Wait, but can we bring the original picture back up, Patrick? Yes. Of course, Watto. Hang on one second. Because something jumps out to me immediately. This guy was the original vape king. This this <laughs> is <laughs> you vaping. absolutely he is vaping. The form <laughs> factor of vape pens. This is what yeah. they look like. That's yeah. right. <laughs> um yep. so then in Empire. In Empire, I'm, I'm uh, a, a stormtrooper uh, walking Vader to his ship at the end, and I think I'm also. I also think it might be another stormtrooper walking, uh, uh, um, walking up to information when mm -hmm. the shuttle lands. I'm not quite sure where that shot is. If it was, a, if it was in Empire Jedi, and then in Jedi, um, I was. I was a cantina band member oh, and of course, one. yeah, Boba Fett. What? And so, yeah, this is yeah. for the, for the special edition shots, Becky. He was, yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 okay. But there is you know, George, there you are. Look at, yeah, look at you, George. George, you look so much younger there. Well, we both do. Well, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, but. it's been, a, it's been a few decades. <laughs> yeah. I was saying, let's make this scene shorter by doing it faster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Done. And, I mean, if, and if you recall, George, that was a last minute idea that you had to, yeah. to add me to the uh, to, to add Boba to this to the shop. Yeah. I said, mm -hmm. you know, it'd be cool. Let's throw Boba in here. Don, you want to throw on the Boba? <laughs> it's exactly <laughs> I, it's how I remember Don. it. Yeah. Uh, um, I have a question. OK. I'm, hang on. I'm going to bring up this one, too. And then you're also you're this guy, too. You're yeah. The, the Beth on the right. That's oh, one of the Jedi rocks. Yeah. That's one of the original, and that's Nelson Hall, the uh, the Rodi Rodian. Oh yeah. Maker. So, and um, yeah, I, that's one of the, the mask I'm wearing is one of the original Cantina Band member masks. It was one of the actual ones used in the first film. So. That's wild. Yeah, it's wild. It's wild that they yeah, saved so. Oh. Sorry. 
Can You're you back now. Up? We can hear you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Becky, what's your I question? Said, well, no, I just said really important stuff before, but I was muted. Well, I was going to ask I, I, if, like, Don, as you know, because you're so close to the Star Wars universe and have participated in the making of it. And George, I've talked to you about this as well, but yeah, like, do you have moments still of just like, this is so cool. And it's so cool that I've been in like every Star Wars movie because you talk about it and I'm like peeing in my pants. But when you're, I know when you're working on something and you're close to something, you know, it's because it's part, part of your life and part of your, your reality. But is there ever a moment of like, Holy shit! I'm in every Star Wars movie. It yeah, it, w it was awesome, really, really awesome at the time. That you know, makes it's me the, very happy. Yeah, it you know, it, and uh, the the reason I I tried to in the special editions tried to get in as much as I did. Dave Dave Carson was the effects supervisor for the special edition stuff. It, it after a while blackballed me and Liz, and Nelson from, <laughs> from being it because we were. He's like, don't you have anybody else that can do you know? I just happen to be the right size for all the costumes. Funny that. Um, yeah. So, oh um, it's, yeah. It's, 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 I it's a a this was me. I was doing a, I was, George, not cool. Yeah. <laughs> I was doing it. No, it's, it's, a rare, it's a rare thing that someone watches a movie, goes, wow, this movie is great. And then 15 years later, weasels their way into being in the movie. Yeah. And you did it three times over. Like you uh, went like five times to... actually. Well, but I'm saying the other the other two you got in there before they got made, right? Yeah, that's true. But the original trilogy, you're watching it, and you go, "I swear to God, I'm gonna be in these." <laughs> yeah. And your friends are probably going, "Yeah, right." If they make a prequel or something, and you go, "No, I'll do that too." But I'm telling you, I'm gonna be in these fucking movies. <laughs> I'm gonna Mandela affect your ass. I'll have always been in these movies. <laughs> That's. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it is amazing. I I never even my most favorite movies I'd never watch, and I'm gonna and go. I'm gonna be in this movie. One yeah. Day. Yeah. That's already been shot. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was pretty cool. amazing. But Don, you also played, you played Django too for a photo shoot for the yeah. Vanity Fair thing. I'm gonna bring this up because this is. I love this picture. Uh, Django is not in the final picture, right? He didn't make it to the final. It was the cover for Vanity Fair that Annie Lieber yeah. shot. Yeah, um, there you are. Yeah. My good friends, Ian and Chris. Right yeah. yeah. Now, Chris, you know, Chris, Christopher Lee was the one only time that I was ever starstruck. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and everyone else was really sweet. You know, the entire cast and crew was wonderful. Uh, but when I found out that Christopher Lee was going to be in it, because I was a huge horror film fan, sure. uh, particularly the old horror films, and and Dra and him as Dracula scared the crap out of me. Yeah. And as a kid, and that's the first thing I said to him. I, I, I when I got I I got somebody to introduce me. Rob Coleman was the animation director. I asked him. I said, "Could you introduce me to Christopher Lee? I really got to meet him." And he in, he introduced me, and I says, "Oh, I, I says I just wanted you to know I scared the hell out of you scared the hell out of me as a kid," and I'm sure he had heard that thousands yeah. and thousands of times. And he and he goes, "Oh, you know, and it, I, I can't do I don't do impersonations, but he, and his, his his thick, deep voice. He just says, "Oh, just fairy tales, my boy." <laughs> <laughs> Which is a, it's just a, that's a terrifying tone of voice. Yeah. <laughs> it is somehow like a terrifying thing to hear from Dracula. Yeah. yeah. What, was well, your favorite, it, what was your favorite uh, effect or or you know special effect moment that you got to work on in any in any world? Um, and I'll you, I'll build on that. Is there like sculpturally? Is there a favorite? Yeah or model you got to build yeah the unfortunately it's not star wars um because we were so oh, immersed it's all star wars done <laughs> <laughs> we were so immersed in all that star wars but when i got to work on pirates of the caribbean i got to build the pirate ships the black pearl uh -huh. um uh that was really cool because um it we they brought in a shipwright a guy named peter bailey who is local to the area um and he actually built ships for real and uh, and they brought he brought us they brought him in to teach us how to build ships because they had to well obviously look like real ships but to a certain extent they had to work like real ships with the masts and the rigging and all that and um, 
And so he he taught us, he had some amazing, you know, tricks and taught us how things, are. and so it was just cool to do like this old, like thousand year old art. Uh, although we put a little spin on it and that we were using computers and laser cutters <laughs> and stuff like that to make some parts, but uh, but we still built it up like a real ship, you know, with, with uh, sections and planking. And so that was, that was a lot of fun. I, the, I, actually, the one thing that I was also most proud of that I got to build was the mask that goes on Vader uh, at uh, on Anakin as Vader. So that mask that's coming down on him in Revenge of the Sith, I built that. So that was fun. Yeah. And I, I heard you tell a story on a podcast about that mask, uh, about how they wanted to, they were trying to make it a different way than it actually was. <laughs> <laughs> um, You'll probably, I don't know how much you'll remember of this one, George, because I don't, I think there were a lot of people between us at that point and, with, and the communication wasn't exactly there, but yes, there, there was a, there was an animatic. We always worked off what's called animatics where George had the, the team, uh, his, his uh, people build, do these little computer animated and they were great. They, they, some, some of them could almost have been dropped in the movie as is, but we would then take them and they, they were used for timing and all that sort of thing. And they had this one where they were showing it going on the face and it, Darth has these two straw like structures, one that goes here and one that comes di down diagonally here. And it's split from the top one. <laughs> and um, and I'm watching the animatic and and talking to the effects supervisor and and they said that's we want to build it like that. I said, well, that's wrong. I says, you know, the it splits down here, and he goes, well, but it's in the animatic, so it, it you know George approved the animatic. I says, well, it's wrong. Uh, I said the in Return of the Jedi, it splits down here. The fans will hate this and. He's like, well, we have to build it that way. I said, well, can you ask George? Because they wouldn't give me your phone number, George. Uh, I said, could you ask George and tell him that it's not right, that it splits down here, like in Jedi? And so they went away, and a few days later came back, and uh, he said, um, yeah, uh, George said, yes, do it in Jedi, just like it is in animation, in the anim animatic. And I'm like, but the animatic is wrong. That's two different things. That's a contradictory <laughs> statement. I don't think, George, you had, you know, you were busy with a lot of stuff, and I'm sure you were distracted. So, and, George, set no, the record straight. No, set the record straight. I remember. Well, if you remember, to quote the, the Whitney Houston song, it's not right, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't. I remember seeing the in when I watched the um, special edition, like feeling tension in that moment, mm -hmm. and not being able to put your you can't put your finger on it, but it's yeah. like uh, there was a disagreement here. George, yeah. well, you know also, I mean? also, you know, before people, <laughs> yes, that's that's assuming that from the moment Darth Vader was created, he never made any updates. He never got to the point, you know, Felicity cut her hair in season two and everyone went nuts. And, I, and at, at some point, uh, Anakin deep inside Darth Vader probably was like, you know what? I want to change up how my mask is. Don, <laughs> you would not believe, story. you would not believe Don, how often George brings up Felicity's haircut. It is very <laughs> clear that that was a watershed moment for him in terms of how he perceived narrative. <laughs> And well, what you could do, yes. You know, the in the second Star Wars that we made in five in Empire, we cut uh Luke's hand off, mm -hmm. and JJ was obviously influenced by that. When he got to the second season of Felicity, he said, Let's do something devastating to this character, let's cut her hair off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and it and both moments were received with the same amount of you know, it's a shock to the system, yeah. I thought, we never got around to telling the story. And I really think it would be great because I, I pictured it like a montage. Like if we told one of those sort of mid early Vader stories that sort of fall between between three and four, mm -hmm. you know, like if we told some of those stories, at some point I imagine like kind of a fun and flirty montage where Vader's changing up the way his mask is made, like trying <laughs> different masks and the stormtrooper's like, no, you know. 
Well, it could have been perhaps they were like the manufacturers, you know, like he had to switch manufacturers and they just did it different. You know? Yeah, they don't make that. They, oh, my mask broke. And they're like, well, here's the new one. It's like, this isn't like my old mask. Right. That would be one way. And they're it. like, they made that 25 years ago, and Darth. He, it he doesn't. Mad and he choked the guy who's telling about the mask. Patrick, act like you're choking. Yeah. He'd be like, and then Patrick's character would die. And it'd be very funny because he's just killed someone. Yeah. Because it was simple uh, manufacturing. Or he could have cut his arm, his hand off, you know, because right. that helped him. Like that. That's, I, I have that about the Matrix, that feeling where, you know, they have like the loading program in the Matrix where you have your residual self image. I know this wasn't one of your movies, George, but it was a very popular yeah. film. It was very uh, popular meaning that like in that loading program they get to like choose their outfits and their haircuts and their you know their guns and their equipment and stuff and i want to see that sort of pretty woman clothes trying on montage in the matrix loading program because they land on like the most conspicuous outfits imaginable they're like i want these are they chose those clothes that they show yeah. up with they, they were fashion forward <laughs> I do find it interesting. I feel like it's it's not discussed very often as like in universe character decision making. It only ever gets discussed as George changed his mind. But in A New Hope, Darth has like cloth that drapes over mm -hmm. his shoulder pads and his chest. Mm -hmm. And then oh Don. He just felt like the conversation was getting too hot. You don't want to talk about the oh. clock. This is too hot. No, it, it got too close. Too hot. Fuck. Fuck. The NDA. We can't yeah. talk about All right. Clock. I guess let's talk about all that. I guess now, let's say this. Right. Or when Don more comes more back. Than, than enough said yeah. ETS. Okay, what do you want to say when Don comes back, Lotto? Because he has no idea that we're saying this right now. No, I'm just saying I'm going to trick him and sneak attack the cloth talk, but let's talk about all of that. Okay. We now, Becky, have, uh, we I know we just should be laughing. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> uh, Don, don't worry. You didn't miss anything. We are just okay. having a fun conversation about the Nickelodeon sketch series reboot. All that that Becky was head right around. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh -huh. Cool. It was cool. great. great. And, it was great fun. And remind us your favorite sketch, Becky. Uh, episode two. Uh, yes. Attack of the Clones. Anyway, <laughs> Don, uh, sneak attack. What about the cloth that originally went over <laughs> Darth Vader's shoulder pads? I hate that. I hate Jedi that they changed Hunter. that. Why did they know. change it? Why don't we talking about what Darth went through as a character internally to make that big sartorial change? <laughs> Not only did they do that, they changed they changed his boxes too. Yeah, boxes. Boxes. There's there's no they here. These are things that Darth was going through. You can chart <laughs> his mood through the trilogy by his fashion choices. But I want to see that scene, George, where he's in front of the mirror and he makes that yeah. decision and go and like yeah. nods at the mirror. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. What if I tuck mm -hmm. it under? Ooh, yeah. that's, that's uh, slimming. Yeah, <laughs> you're not supposed to like the changes. It's yeah. about Darth owning a different look based on he doesn't feel that he's not feeling the cloth anymore. He's not feeling I, like he, he, it's not working for him, and he's got to make it. Work where on. the Jedi, where Jedi's shop in general, where like where Luke went right before uh, Return of the Jedi to come in like in his like dress blacks. Yeah, to, to Jabba's palace. Like where did where did they get the clothes? And why was Anakin in leather blacks from the jump? It's a great question. Yeah. It's a great question, George. Yeah. This is yeah. you, George. Padme and all her costume choices and all of her. Face. I mean, she's she's like one. she's yeah. like yeah she's got like a closet full of stuff. Yeah, you have, I, mean, I mean there there are there are variations of all. I mean, their world in, is different than our world, but there are a lot of similarities. So there's a Jedi version of anthropology. There's a Jedi version of Gap. But if I if I had like lived in that if I lived in that world and this is, not, this is not the first time I've played if I lived in that world but if I lived in that world and I knew that Jedi's wore like a linen kind of samurai inspired cross sort of with the belt and then I saw a young man in a black version of that I'd be like that yeah. guy's probably bad yeah yeah 
I mean, it's definitely. Uh, yeah, it's but the stormtroopers are all white and white, so. Mm -hmm. But they were, but they were good guys initially, sort of. No, no. They were supposed to be. I mean, these things are complicated. I know. I just, I just want to point out that I did mention a store called Stay on Target. I heard that. That, that was. <laughs> Thank you, Don. I appreciate it. Thank very you. Very funny. Thank you. Very funny. <laughs> now, Don. Very I mean, look, listen. We're talking about funny. We're talking about Star Wars, Don. I want to talk about one of my favorite things. Yeah, which is a Don Bees picture. <laughs> yes, That's yeah. a Don directed Bees. by Bees. The Don Bees joint. Now yeah. this this was uh this is a it's called R two D two beneath the dome. It's on you can find it on YouTube, but I you know I buy you, know, you always watch it on YouTube. Don't buy a copy because I get no money for it ever. So well, Don, I never yeah. got any money for it. Sorry, I bought, wow. it was your marketing people that made that decision. I bought right. this in two thousand two, so there's no. There's, you know, it's too okay. late at this point. This was not I, a new I, purchase. I do think it's on the Blu-ray box set, though, right? It has carried I over. It, I don't think really? it is. Let me think. look. Now, Don, can you can you tell people a little? Because I know it changed a little bit while you were making it to when it came out. But what was the what was the original idea behind? Or it, ca it came up uh, during episode one. There's a uh, two of uh, the other R2 effects guys, R2 operators. Uh, uh, Graham uh, Riddell and Patrick Johnson um, had, we were operating R2 in the big hangar set and we thought, oh, it'd be funny if, you know, maybe we should get like a video camera and we could have them play soccer or back mm -hmm. there it was football, of course. Mm -hmm. And they, we could bounce with all the, the three R2s we had, we could be playing back and forth and wouldn't that be funny to film that? And that was kind of that was our extent of our humor at that point. <laughs> um, and, and, and that, and we never did. So episode two came along and we were in Sydney, Australia and shooting and I had different crew at that point. And I was mentioning, I said, oh, we always thought it would be fun to do something, you know, with R2 separate from, you know, like his daily, his daily routine or something like that. Right. And, um, and then we happened to mention, we started brainstorming ideas. Oh, you know, we could do this. Oh, we could do that. And we started, uh, we mentioned it to the documentary crew. That was the, 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 uh, uh, on you know that on call every day they were shooting they shot mm. hundreds of hours of footage of behind the scenes and um they got into it and so they th started when they would do their interviews with the different people for the behind the scenes stuff they would then ask them in character let's talk about r2d2 so they started the they started this um this trend with everybody. And then people started hearing about it and people wanted to take part in it. Uh -huh. And an interesting bit of trivia, which I just found this out, uh, Elizabeth Tulloch, who's playing Lois in the new Superman mm -hmm. and Lois TV show. Yeah. She, that she was ha hanging out in Sydney. I think she was friends with Natalie yeah. Portman and she came and she was just, she was just on set with us and she decided, they decided she should be R2's girlfriend. And Not so she, not just his girlfriend, but well, the mother of his child. Yeah, because the maybe at the end, possibly, maybe, maybe, George. possibly. You know, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know who the father was. Don't be really. cynical. Don't be cynical. You, you think? <laughs> what are we speculating here? That she's lying? Wow. You know, she says R2 things... is father, and I believe her. <laughs> I, you know, I know R two. I don't. You know, I don't. Know. Okay. But anyway, <laughs> so. Um, so anyway, there was a bunch of there was a bunch of pe interviews and everything, and we, sh we were doing this stuff in Sydney. And then um, Ben Bird, who's the sound designer and yeah. the the voice of R two, essentially, and all the voices in uh, the Aliens. Um, there was a, on the back lot of uh, Fox Studios in in Sydney, back down to like a, a public area where they had uh, restaurants and and theaters and. Uh, outdoor event things and they had a bungee jump there over a 12 foot swimming pool and it was it was like about 90 100 feet up and and ben thought it would be funny to bungee jump r2 and so if you remember george we asked you and you said I'm yeah that, i got that, paid to be in it yeah that's right you did and um uh and then francis, francis is in it that's right. Well, he was visiting. Remember, he, yeah. he came down and visited on set and, and and you were showing him the footage and he wanted to be in it. And that's why he came up with the thing about Michael Corleone and all that. 
Yeah. The, the one I find very uh, fascinating is the inclusion of Richard Dreyfus, because most of the other actors who appear in the movie are uh, people who were working on the Star Wars film at that time, or someone like Paula Quest, who said, was around set. Uh, how, how did you lasso Dreyfus to do a shoot? But it's Dreyfus, it's Dreyfus and Candy Clark. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> they were doing. Uh, uh, I can't. Re uh, let's see. What year would that have been? That would have been two thousand two. I think two thousand three. I'm trying to remember what it was now. But anyway, they there were they were doing some sort of press junket for American Graffiti. It was the special and, edition, wasn't it? Wasn't that when uh, we did the special for American Graffiti? When it came out on DVD, maybe. maybe? I don't it, know. Maybe it was coming on DVD. Or, anyway, they were they were they were. Part. I wasn't there when they that, got. Is that how you, you got know. Harrison as well? Harrison actually, I, it, it, that was just a, an interview that was pulled. Uh, <laughs> he's not really talking about R two. It just it pulled from yeah. other footage. Very clever. I will say that R two lit up the second you said Harrison. Literally, lit up. Yeah. Now look at this. The Donnie That's pretty good. That. That's pretty good. <laughs> I'm gonna have to frame that one. Yeah. Wow, that's so lovely. That's great. Now, George, you've done this show for many, many, many years. Yeah. And I'm sure you this has come up before. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to get Don's thoughts on uh, R2 flying mm. mm -hmm. in uh, in uh, Revenge of the Sith. Right. Mm -hmm. Actually, does he fly in? Back of the clones. Yeah. He flies in both. He flies in both. And instead, he uses his flying jets to murder other droids, right. to burn which, them. Which yeah. would have been a super handy skill at probably a thousand other times. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Have, have you discussed the flying, George, with various yeah. guests? And have have yeah. you gone to the Well, yeah. There's a same, it's the same reason that Michael Jordan doesn't, you don't see him playing a bunch of basketball now. He blows <laughs> no. out his knees between Absolutely. three and four. He blows out his <laughs> well, knees. I think we talked about this last time that the only thing that happens without fail in every single Star Wars movie is that R2 gets fixed and cleaned. Mm -hmm. Yes. He looks good. And he saves the day in some way. I yeah. know. So you're telling me that they just I really think R2 is the other the other. I think he's really yeah. got, you know the, yeah. the, the the best the you know the most yeah. powerful Jedi. But when you well, get this is six, yeah. he's a little old, he's a just slightly older and the prequels take a, take a lot out of him. He's not as active in, in, in four, five, and six because in this for the same reason Yoda isn't. Okay. He's older. Yeah. He's older. <laughs> no, you know what ha you know what actually happened? The, the 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 rockets malfunctioned, just like you know, the Vader thing, the mask. Yeah. The rockets malfunctioned, and because of all the strife in the galaxy, yeah. the the there were embargoes and everything, and and that um that factory shut down and they couldn't get any replacement parts for their, no for their replacement. rockets. I feel so. like same I reason Vader see. can't get his old mask. Exactly. Old same mask. company. I think it was the same company. Same company. Don is taking George's side on this. Yeah. <laughs> well, he was good to me all these years. So I, yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. I, I you know, by yeah. getting a new iPod, you know, the he things was, go out of go out of print, you know? Yeah. He was good to me most years. <laughs> <laughs> and there's not. Um, Don, what did you do for Radio Land Murders? Because we love Radio Land Murders here. I I, I enjoy them. I, I yeah. built the uh, I built the building. I built the tower that that in the opening shot and the radio, you know, where the and battle sequence happens and mm -hmm. and then also the little sequence where the we, the the he's flipping around on the on the um, letters. Mm -hmm. uh, those are all miniature. Well, there's miniatures mixed in with live action. So. Don, do you have a preference between building characters to perform and then building models or, uh, you know, of, of uh, ships or locations, or is it just two sides of, of the same coin? Um, I, the, I always thought when I was getting into film business, I was going to do the monster thing and, and makeup and that. And and I found I was better at the mechanical side and, mm -hmm. and of things. So I kind of enjoy. Uh, and I never was going to be a model maker. I never. Well, I was. I wanted to be a filmmaker, but um, so I I never 
never intended to, other than like building model kits as a kid or something like that. I mean, it's never like passionate about model making. So I kind of fell into it just out of necessity because I needed work. <laughs> so, um, and I happened to be good enough that they kept me around. Um, yeah, so it, yeah, I, I, I actually enjoy a lot of the model work I and the engineering of it, that sort of stuff. So mm -hmm. I, I have enjoyed that prop making. Yeah. Don, you, you've, you've worked for me a lot and you've worked for my buddy, Steve, a lot. What's the biggest contrast between when you're, when, when you're working on a Georgie and when you're working on a Stevie? <laughs> you're, you're much more approachable. You're much more, you know, you're a lot of people didn't realize that. A lot of people didn't realize that at ILM, uh, you know, when you'd come to ILM is like this unwritten rule. Don't look, don't look you in the eye, you know, because they might get fired or something. I don't know. And so nobody, everyone just like, you know, walked away, but you would always say hi to me at ILM, which was great. And, uh, and, um, and, you know, I could talk to you. So he wouldn't say hi. I didn't see him. I only saw him once. He only brought him by when we were working on last crusade, you brought him by one time. So yeah. he wasn't up there as much like you were. You were up there. Well, it's, he's very busy and and very famous. So, I mean, George, you're pretty busy. I'm busy and famous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not just cool my heels for decades. <laughs> I'm right now. Um, my I have to go pick this person up at the airport. I'm what it is is I'm a Lyft driver. <laughs> you're a Lyft driver. I'm a, yeah. I'm a Lyft driver now. Becky, thank you for coming on. The Tonight Becky. Show didn't work out. Now I'm a Lyft driver. Yeah. Becky, hey, real... look. I step up if you ask me. Hey, -o. Hey -o. Yeah. Becky, real quick. If you could pitch a Star Wars uh, a series, do you have an idea in, in your back pocket? Oh, yeah. We tried to announce a couple new Star Wars series every week on this show. So if you want to pitch us one. Yeah, no one told me about that, though. Mm -hmm. But if you I could... I always want to do, this is what I always want to do, which is to shoot the small companion comedy that takes place in the large universe. Mm -hmm. So it's like, like the, the workplace, the workplace comedy that's going on in the tavern in the game of Thrones universe, for example. Gotcha. So it's, you know, I think it would be taking a very small piece of the star Wars, you know, it, like what is the party down of <laughs> the Moss Eisley Cantina? Star Wars well, party hot. down because they are making a party down reboot, and there's no reason that this couldn't be a co-production that we we could ramp this up right away. I don't yeah, think they've written it, the I party think it's, down with things that are like you know the story is about the big players of the world. Yeah, I I really enjoy the idea of checking in with the with the with the with the folks. It's the guys in the back making the tapas that they hand out at the cantina. And you get a little of it with like, uh, especially with the stormtroopers, you get a yeah. little bit of the sort of the minutiae. Yeah. Call it. But um, just, you know, like, like the, 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 the show that takes place in the store where the Jedi get the clothes. Right. Or Watto's hut. You could have a good stick on the Watto's hut with the pit droids. Yeah. And all those puns. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all the puns. And I was so appreciative that so many people in the chat correctly guessed the puns that I came up with years ago. Oh, good. Nice. I'm yes. glad that they came up with them. Um, Becky, thank you. Uh, come back anytime. You're the best. Yeah, I gotta go pick up all these people and drop them off at the various locations. Don, it was such a, a dorky pleasure and I, it's such a thrill to hear your stories. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to meet you. You too. Thank you, George, again, and Watto and uh, Patrick. Thank you guys so much. See you, Becky. Thank you. Drive safe. Don, I want to ask. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't get this in there. I, I, I did the quick IMDb check just to make sure I wasn't missing opportunities to ask you about big projects. And I had forgotten that you were the chief model maker on one of my favorite movies ever. And one that I think is was a deceptively hard job which is Galaxy Quest, where one of the things I love the most about that movie is it treats the reality of the show within the show and the space and all of that very seriously, not like a comedy. And the effects are out on the level of a real sci-fi film, but you're in this difficult position because you're trying to riff on Star Trek, but designs also have to stand on their own. And I don't think 
the model work and the design work in that film gets enough credit for how well it evokes the ships that we know, but also are mm-hmm. their own thing. Mm-hmm. The 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 guys that that designed it, uh, that were art directors and stuff on it were huge, huge, huge Star Trek fans. So th- I, they knew that universe really well. A lot of them had worked on the movies. So um, I think that came through with it. Where I worked, the, the sequence I worked on was the space dock sequence. The um, best, the best. <laughs> and yeah. uh, and that was. Um, um, you know, that, that's, that's all I got. I, I did a little bit on the crash in the end of the, the ship that crashed in, into the convention center, but yeah, yeah, it was a, it was a fun, it was a, a fun show to work on. It was one of those that, you know, sometimes when you're working on a show, you're thinking, oh, you know, this is going to be really cool. And the movie comes out and it's like, oh, really? Uh, and then sometimes you go the other way, oh, this is going to be a dog. And, <laughs> and, and uh, we were watching a, a sequence. Uh, it was the, it was the, them leaving the, um the space dock and you know when you're watching a sequence that early in the production it's it's just slammed together the, the there's the you know, production sound nothing's there's no effect sounds and stuff and and it, out of, totally out of context i'd never read the script um and i'm watching the sequence i'm like oh this is horrible the, this just looks really stupid you know they're and they're overacting and you know it's like oh this is going to be a dog and i was so wrong <laughs> it's one of my favorite yeah. films now yeah. and so happy to have been part of it and that's uh i mean they still this, george you're gonna get sad about this yeah. i it's, it's a little bit of a humble brag and i don't mean it to be i went to lucasfilm like a year and a half ago and some uh, of the are still they're still hanging up at at yeah. Lucasfilm, which is really cool that it's one of the things that they want to highlight because they are so well made. Both the Protector and the um yeah. the Eucerus ship. Yeah. And you know, the Protector originally was supposed to say USE uh USEA, which stood for the United something. Uh, they they made up something. Mm-hmm. But uh but if you would read it, it would say use a protector. So. <laughs> but they didn't do that. Yeah, no, that changed. Is now, there Don, anything? No, go ahead, George. Don, you worked on a lot of uh, second installments, an unusual number of second installments, I would say, within mm-hmm. the percentage-wise, because you were Evan Almighty, Ghostbusters yeah. Two, The Fly Two. You like you? I, it's it's a recurring thing. I I do have a question about Ghostbusters Two because you're uncredited, according to IMDb. Yes. What did you do on Ghostbusters? Did you do any legal work? I did. Uh the ghost nanny i worked on the ghost nanny that that uh, there's a the, uh, peter was who's the actor peter mcnichol uh, mcnichol he's in isn't he in dragon slayer right he's in dragon yeah, slayer. yeah. yeah. um yeah. he uh he, they they filmed him obviously against uh blue screen uh but the for the long shots of him flying was a, a puppet it was about 12 inch tall puppet and yeah. um and and so we made this rod puppet that we filmed against blue screen, and they comped it into the to the background. Yeah, and then I, I did a, a few little other things here and there. Right? I, Slime River. There we go. Yeah, that's really yeah. Peter. Yeah. yeah. But, there you wow. go. Yeah. yeah. Oh, also uh, uh, Pearl Harbor, which is also kind of a sequel film in the sense that it's World War II. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I left Pearl Harbor to go out work on episode two. But uh, yes. Um, oh, choice. Uh, or episode three, I can't remember one of those. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah, we I worked was on a crew, and and you know, by the way, when I say I worked on these things, I you know, it was a huge crew of us, it wasn't yeah. just me doing everything. So, uh, but uh, I worked on the crew that did the the one big battleship that that, that is featured, and it's supposed to, it's actually featured as several battleships. They ended up doing a lot of digital replacement over it. So it was it was used more for textures and that sort of thing, and then it's also in the opening shot of it where it's the Arizona sunk. Um, we they we they took this beautiful model we made that was like museum quality and and then made it <laughs> broke it in half and made it into that's a riding Hulk. So that's, but, yeah, that's uh, what the story demanded. But in Michael Bay, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah here, here's a dorky question for you because I feel like when people. Uh, hearing about model work, they tend to imagine models as being like model kit size. They don't understand how massive these things often are. What is the single biggest model that you ever worked on? Um, 
the thing, one of the, the the biggest probably was one of the pirate ships from Pirates of the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. We built a deck of it that was 33 feet long. Right. Like people so, don't understand that those things are bigger than cars. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> a lot more expensive than cars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the the Black Pearl was seventeen feet long. Um, oh. The I think that was the might have been the and, and really tall too because of the masts. Um, but yeah, the the it you was could the fit like three George Mirazons in there, almost. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we we could go inside it. We could go inside of them. We could fit several people inside. That's wild. Uh, Is there anything that you wish people? This it's not the right way to phrase this. Is there anything that you wish people gave you more credit for, like some effect where you're like, oh, I wish people talked about this specific effect more because it was really hard or it took a long time to do. And Don, you should answer this question carefully because Patrick is fishing here. He's trying to find a way to demand that he gets more credit for everything <laughs> he does. Yeah. So he's listening very attentively to how you word this. <laughs> well. Speaking for myself, mm -hmm. um, no, I get I, that's a great question, but I, I don't, uh, I don't, I, I, I you know, I, I, the thing, a whole thing about the effects is, is it's supposed to be seamless and magic. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not supposed yeah. to know that it happened. Yeah. So if if it doesn't stick out, then you've done a good job. But, yeah, you know. the biggest compliment you could receive would be to say, "I did effects on Attack of the Clones," and for someone to say, "What are you talking about? There's no effects in that movie." <laughs> Right. And in a certain way, if you're the producer of a weekly talk show live stream, <laughs> the greatest compliment you could get is the host and the sidekick saying, Patrick, what's your fucking deal? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess that's fair. Yeah. yeah. What I is your fucking deal? By the way? <laughs> I wish I knew. Now, um, Don, do you now I, I feel I feel bad to hear that you uh, you had a bad deal for uh, for your R2D2 uh, uh Beneath the Dome documentary. And, and I looked it up, by the way. I was very wrong. It was never released on any of the boxes. It yeah. was broadcast on Fox, and it was available as that DVD, which was a limited exclusive. I can't believe it isn't still in circulation. Yeah. yeah. It's, on, now, it's on YouTube. And I, how I did you, now, how, when you were negotiating, it was that an example of it was such a passion project that you, you let the business side of it sort of like uh, fall away. <laughs> you, were, you were making your movie, anything to get the movie made. And then at the end of it, you realize, oh, I didn't get points. I didn't get, you know, did you not protect yourself when you were negotiating that? <laughs> no. I signed away my life. You my my son, my firstborn, you own, you know, oh, so. wow. George. You know, Wano well, knows about that. Well, I don't know about, about that. that. I mean, I know about it from the other side of the situation. <laughs> I mean, I hate to say it, but right now, boop, I just clicked two buttons and I got I got one on DVD for a steal because I didn't I actually didn't have that uh, here. Wow, you, yeah, that's just going to go to an eBay seller. It's not a, it's a, it's second hand. Oh, hang, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, what? Right. Don, what? Right, Don, Don, stay right here. I'm just going to pull you off the screen for one sec. I just need to talk to George, and I don't want you to hear it. Okay. Okay. George, you should pay Don. You should send him some money for this DVD. Patrick, you're you're showing your hand here. You want me to pay you to do this show? No, no, no. I just want don't you to use pay Don. Me. Don't use don't gaslight me and use Don as a way of negotiating your Don. own contract. Don. Okay. All right. I'll bring Don back in. Shame on you. Shame. I have yeah. an idea. Yeah. How we can use this platform for good. Because if I'm not mistaken, Disney owns mm. Beneath the Dome now, right? Right. Mm. Probably. Why aren't they putting that sucker up on Disney Disney's Plus? Blood. Would you get money if it was on Disney Plus? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I think Lucasfilm owns it. Yeah. But they but they would pay you an exposure. It's good. It's good oh, screen right. time. That's true. That's you, true. You do want yeah. it to go up on Disney Plus, though, right? Yeah, it could go on with Disney. Yeah, it's great. We people need to enjoy it. It's not the movie I wanted, by the way. It got made by committee after a while. So. Well, let's talk about let's talk your about original it. vision. <laughs> I had we had uh, interviews with other, you know, other droids and everything, you know, that we wanted to do. I've somewhere I've got my not my but a group of us that got together and the original script and uh, but um, but it never got shot nor, Don, nor got finished. Don, so. Is there? 
Maybe we could do a special edition. I don't know. Well, I'm I'm wondering if we could do I'm wondering if we could do a reading. If we could do a reading of your original scripts. Our five D four was in was in it. John, and what are you doing, George? Well, gosh, I think he this could be it. something that we could we could do an all star reading <laughs> for charity of your original script. <laughs> I'll have to find it. I'll have to. I genuinely think if you have it, I like that idea. Here's the thing, John. I can't get you any money. My money is tied up in putting together the Museum of Narrative Art. Uh, it's going to education. You understand? Oh, yeah. You've got money to make full sized R two D twos for your friends. You have a nice <laughs> Everything in that room that you're in looks nice. I'm not worried about you, John. You're doing okay. But if there's a charity that you would be willing to, uh, that you would want to raise money for, we could arrange an all-star reading of the original vision, <laughs> the original version of yeah. R2-D2 be, uh, Beneath the Dome. And I'll say this, even if that doesn't happen, I think we should talk about this charity because I think we will probably use it in the next few months regardless. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I do have a charity that, that that's close this. and near and dear to me. When uh, a very good friend, Grant Imahara, who was one of the MythBusters, mm -hmm. yes. I, I knew Grant. I met Grant in 1993 when he started at uh, Lucasfilm at the Home THX um, division, and um, so Grant, uh, he was only 22 years old or something when I first met him, and. Um, he was his job in uh, at home THX was testing speakers. He was essentially blowing up speakers. That that was what he was doing. Uh, through we Nelson Hall and I, who I mentioned several times, uh, got to know Grant, and we uh, encouraged him to uh, work at ILM. So Nelson helped facilitate him getting work at ILM. He became an integral part of work, ILM, uh, doing working on a lot of the same films I did, mm -hmm. including the Star Wars prequels. He helped. Re redo all the electronics for R2 for episode two. And um, and he even played C-3PO and some stuff. And then he got the gig on Mythbusters because the Mythbusters were actually people that we all worked with, Adam mm -hmm. and, and Jamie and, uh, and Tori were all people that we had worked with. And then uh, he went on and became obviously very famous with Mythbusters. And then when he passed away last year, uh, in July of last year, uh, his mother asked a group of us, a group of, all of his friends, uh, to um, help her form a foundation. So it's called the Grant Imahara, Imahara STEAM Foundation. STEAM mm -hmm. stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Math. And uh, we're trying, we're, we want to carry on Grant's legacy because one of the things that he did at, when he was at ILM, he was working with a, a local high school up there in the North Bay of San Francisco near San Francisco, uh, with a robotics team at a, 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 a high school that um, served uh, underserved youth. And um, the one of the kids that he worked with that he mentored, it runs the program now. So this was like 20 years ago. Um, and, um, and so we were able to, with the foundation, which is officially just formed late last year. Um, and we launched it on what would have been Grant's 50th birthday, October 23rd. Uh, we were able to actually fund part of their program uh, late last year. So we're trying to raise, always raise money for, for the Grant Himahara Steam Foundation. So, yeah. And if anybody I, I, wants I, to learn about it, go to the Grant Imahara Foundation.org. So, I, I like, Don, that I feel like a lot of people talk about STEM, but you and this foundation go above and beyond talk about STEAM. Yeah. You yeah. have arts in there. You yeah. have yeah. arts. Yeah, it's important. That was that was incredibly important to Grant. He um, he uh, he was obviously in the arts uh, for um, yeah. There he is working on the uh, Federation battleship. Um, he uh, he not only was he uh, in working in special effects and everything, but he himself he sometimes performed. He was he was working with a, uh, some local some theater groups and stuff when he was up here at ILM. Um, he was doing, uh, uh, writing. He actually wanted it. He wanted to be a screenwriter. Uh, so, um, yeah, so he, it, it, arts were very important to him. And, yeah. uh, and he was, I mean, he stretched, uh, among so many different, um, areas, you know, he, cause he, he did the Star Trek, uh, uh, web series as Sulu. Mm -hmm. He was heavy into the cosplay world. Um, Dungeons and Dragons, you know, everything he was, he just was, uh, and he kind of made geek. He did. He, he and Mythbusters, they made geek cool. You know, they, they, yeah. 
it made it be okay to be a geek. So, well, so yeah, I don't. So I, don't... I, I love the idea of doing a, a stage treating. Yeah, I've got to find the script now. If you Look, could, we, it, we will do it. But yeah. we will in the next few months. We will be doing a fundraiser for that, regardless. So we will yeah, we'll figure it out and we'll keep we'll doing that. And we're, we we should say we're we're very close to cracking two hundred thousand dollars raised through the George Lucas talk show. Yeah, that's great. So it'd be great to to cross that landmark raising money for the Grand Theme of Yeah, yeah. Be great. So we will we will figure it out and we will find and, a date. Uh, look around, look around, and I mean, you're an archivist, so I'm assuming <laughs> wherever the script is, it's yeah. you can just use your method to find it. Uh, yeah. And we can put together an all star cast that will really do justice to, you know, uh, I I feel bad that uh, you got. You got a bad, you got a raw deal on the money and that uh, the process took over. How would you say, because this is, you know, the final result, does it still feel like your film, what percentage of it does feel like it's, it's what you wanted? Well, as long as everyone enjoyed it, I guess it's, it's fine. I, I, you know, it, it was different. It, you know, I, uh, there, some of the, 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 the thing was, it never really had fully, fully formed. We had taken the, the interviews that we had, and then we were trying to then work them into a story that made sense. Right. And one of the things that kept coming up in the interviews was uh, the uh, the people. It was always funny to talk about how how poor of a character R2 was. You know, he not a character, but his his. His bad, why, behavior. bad behavior yeah mm -hmm. so we started ha asking people to be a little bit more respectful of <laughs> talking about it. um so we had to you know so like we got christopher lee and that was that was a highlight for me because i got to interview christopher lee for uh for, to to talk about how proud he was to be work in a film with r2 and that he mm -hmm. hasn't had a chance to work in a scene with him yet but yeah um uh so um so we had all that stuff. And then uh, I, I think the marketing needs needed to get it, um, get it released quicker. Mm -hmm. So a, an editor came in and just kind of slammed stuff together. So it wasn't the, it right. wasn't okay. how we were really going it to. The cut the way for Can I say, Don, that is a great way to answer that question, which is if people enjoyed it, it is very much a reflection of my original vision. And if they didn't, <laughs> did you like it? Yeah, I, that's what I intended. That's exactly what I was aiming for. I, I think. I think there's two things we need to have happen here, which is that we need to get uh, the version that was released, such as it is. But that's the version that we have filmed, locked. It's 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 out there. We need to get it on Disney Plus so that people do it, and then you start getting the hashtag going. Release the bees cut. <laughs> or at least the bees cut. And that's, and that's when the will of the people starts because you can make things happen. And and it would be so great if we could finally get that uh, original mm -hmm. edition. It's never too late to completely redo. That's true. Uh, we that could do the cut. special edition. Absolutely. We were actually yeah. we're, we're almost exactly within that perfect window when like two decades have gone by. That's right. This, this is say, like, let's finish it. Yeah. Next year is the 20th anniversary. Don, I understand you have to be a little bit protective of spoilers. You confirmed to Patrick one of the other droids that was originally in the bees cut. What about TC-14? <laughs> you like TC-14? Well, I don't like TC-14. <laughs> The no, hottest he, in the galaxy. You know, we could always add him. We could always add him. <laughs> Why not? Her. Her. I mean, her. Her. That's what I mean. I'm so, yeah. Well, yeah, I'm sorry. Her. We could always add her. Yeah. Wow. She's a lovely lady. Did you know she is just a C-3PO costume, not painted gold? Did you know that? That's, that's not true. <laughs> because I don't want to fuck C-3PO. So that's not true. Uh, this is a beautiful lady. <laughs> now you you were using a lot of the old C3PO costumes in episode 2 and 3, right? Yeah, we didn't make any new ones. You didn't make any new ones. That's wild. Mm -hmm. Uh what was what was that like like seeing an old one and being like I got to paint this? <laughs> it, 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 it yeah. didn't bother me. You know, the, it, yeah. I think the whole idea of the the value and everything 
came along much later you know uh, they wouldn't do that now there there were there was talks early in the in some of the special edition about taking you know armatures out of existing uh stop motion puppets and reusing them and and i at that time i said no can we not do that yeah uh and yeah. we didn't but um no it, you know the thing what the thing about with c 3 pl too is we could always just make them gold again and in some sure. cases we did you know so yeah. the 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 suit in episode two is is a, a empire strikes back suit and um well and interestingly we're talking about grant grant performed as c3po for us for a number of numerous occasions mm -hmm. one of them he's actually partially in episode two um and he was going to be in it more of episode two hmm. and uh it, until they uh Sorry, he 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 actually ended up being more in episode two because they cut the originally you saw the the C C through PO we called it um, uh, or spaghetti O um, uh, more in uh, initially in episode two and then George as you remember you cut you yeah. you decided you didn't want that in there so um, we had to throw Grant in the costume and film him in front of blue screen to wow. cut put to put him over the stuff we had already shot. So but, wait, this is my question because I remember the the I and I didn't work with 30 P on that film. Right. Mm -hmm. But the action figure from Attack of the Clones is the spaghetti C three PO and then you can add the pieces on top of it. Yeah. So I remember thinking, oh that's where this is going to go. Right? We we so shot that scene. The evolution. And you're telling me that literally you just took that scene out, and then the earlier scenes where it was in the spaghetti mode, you you just visually replaced it with wow. new footage. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because we shot Anthony Daniels operated the suit in yeah. Tunisia. Yeah. And so we had all this. We had a, a number of shots we shot with with that suit with that puppet, and uh, I was supposed to do it. I was supposed to operate it, but uh, Anthony asked if he could do it. And um, because he didn't do it for the first film, another uh, mm -hmm. Michael Lynch who uh puppeteered it for the first film. Um, and um, they didn't want to send Michael over to Sydney or to Tunisia to shoot, um, for just for just that, just for that. So Rick McCallum, the producer, said, That's who you should get. You, you got to get Rick on here, yes. Um, I would love it, Rick. Would love you, it. Love you'd, Rick. you'd have a you'd you know you go down that memory lane with him. You know, yeah. you, I mean, if I asked guys... him, he'd do it. If I asked him, to be yeah. on, he'd do it. Yeah, George yeah. Yeah. won't ask yeah. him. That's the problem. He we say it. George Every... ask him. Patrick said... and I go. He'd be a pretty good guest. And George goes, I don't. Yeah, know. He would, but uh, you always have Rick in the back pocket. You know, if I ask, <laughs> yeah, Rick, if you... I ask Rick, I know I'm going to get a good yes. You got the pocket, McCallum. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so. Yeah. Uh, one of the, I want to let you go soon. I don't want to keep you too too long. But um, one of the first things you worked on, right, was the Panasonic commercials. Yeah. Can we talk about these? Because yeah, these let's are go, let's travel down memory lane. Because these these were a trip. These Remember your tagline, George? It was Itzimo, something new. Something new. <laughs> something yeah. Uh, Itzimo. So uh, uh, now that was when was that? That was late eighties, right? The 90, 80, 80, it's, uh, yeah. 87. eighty seven. Summer of eighty. So it's um, 10, 10 years after Star Wars. Yeah. And they're shooting this near the ranch or near ILM? That, that one is not far from the ranch, that shot there. But most of the most of the stuff, any of the commercials we shot with George was at uh, ILM. And then we mm -hmm. shot a series of a few commercials uh, down in Los Angeles that, that didn't involve George. But um, it was a three-year contract, I think, with Panasonic or Matsushita of Japan. Um, and, uh, and George, as you remember, was the spokesman for, for Panasonic mm -hmm. and, and along with the characters. So, um, yeah, we got back, see Anthony Daniels played C3PO and, uh, Peter Mayhew was Chewbacca. We didn't get Dave Prowse for Darth Vader or they didn't get Dave Prowse for Darth Vader. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, and then I did R2. Yeah. Was that and that was the first time you had done R two? The first time I did R two. Yeah, the the guy that had been doing him uh, for there you go, there you, there are, you are, George. Yeah. Um, um, and no flannel. Oh. Um, wow. Yeah. But, but denim. denim. Yeah, yeah. Um, the 
the guy that had been doing R2 uh, got a job at Disney mm. uh, at, in Imagineering. So they needed somebody to operate R2. And I knew him and he suggested me and yeah. the rest, as they say, is history. Did I did I give you I, I don't remember and I apologize I did but I did did I give you any feedback or any notes as far as how to play R two that first time No you just said don't run over my toe again Yeah um, Yeah because that's uh, a good direction That's a yeah. good direction Yeah you kept yeah. running over your feet You know uh -huh. so you just... I didn't I, I didn't mind that you tried it as a but I'm like I don't think that works Let's try it where you don't do that yeah. <laughs> We have one take that we way have that. Let's try <laughs> We had several takes that way <laughs> Yeah um, <laughs> It was my first, your know, first few days operating. So. Yeah, that's fair. I totally. got better. We sold I, got a lot better. Of I only ran over other people's feet later. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, R two is a mischief maker. What's that? R two is a mischief maker. He is. He's yeah. He's mm -hmm. just he yeah. never listens. He's he's worse than most actors. So. <laughs> Agree. Now, oh, uh, now we're, it's no. now we're like we're in beneath uh, beneath the dome. We're, we're, we're <laughs> he just he just sometimes just didn't want to work. You know. Yeah. Yeah, Don. Did. We could we could have you on for hours, and we would not run out of questions to ask. Yeah. And the chat has been suggesting questions all night, but there's one area, and it's a question to actually both of you, George and Don. If you don't mind digging into your past together, yeah. we've talked a lot about your career, but we haven't talked as much about the social life. And people are dying to know. Did Don Bees? And George Lucas ever go to Chili's together? We've heard that George and George has confirmed it that he loves Chili's, love and a lot of people who have worked with George have said that George yes. loves Chili's. Every time we've had a guest on who has worked with George, they mention how much he loves Chili's, the fast casual chain. I don't. Yeah, you know, should we talk about? It? I don't. Yeah. You, know. you should talk about it. <laughs> yeah. We did TCBY yogurt you know, it, together. It, this once. can't be yogurt, I remember saying. This is the country's best yogurt. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what was yeah, your, your go-to? What was your go-to when you would... Uh, well, I'm kind of, you know, I'm kind of middle of the road. I'm like vanilla, you yeah. know, with some sprinkles and stuff. But... Yeah. Um, you remember yeah. what I would order? I know what I'm supposed to order. Well, you know, with the diabetes and all that sort of stuff, I I think you'd probably stay away from the really sweet I, stuff. I try to I try to get away with whatever I can get away with, though. <laughs> but That's he true. is famously diabetic. Yeah. It's a problem sometimes. The the servers at TCB well, I would go, wait a second, <laughs> George. I know your diabetic ass. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, George. Before we let before we let Don go, I feel like you and R two should have a conversation, George. Well, I, I, sure, I would love to have a conversation with R two, and then and then I have someone who who is very shy who wants to talk to Don. Oh, oh why don't you do that first, and then we'll end with R two, George. All right. I don't know. I almost feel like the other thing might be the funnier thing to end on. <laughs> okay. To let me talk to R two first, and and just uh uh. Now, this, obviously, this is R two. This is a bootleg R two. Does he have the consciousness <laughs> of the uh, of the actual R two D two? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. All right. So he has all of R 2s memories of working on the movie. Yeah. Oh, I miss you, buddy. How are you doing? Yeah. How's it? What's it like living with Don? You read any of those books on the shelf? Oh, what's your favorite? Oh, wow. Well, uh, I know you're going to live in a new house with a new owner, a new friend. Um, I wish you all the best, R2. I miss, I, I mean, I have, I have an R2 unit, but it's, it, it's feel, this feels like one that was made with the Don B's touch. Uh, you're a pretty special R2 unit. And I can tell you that a lot of adventures. Be good, R2. Behave, right? Yeah. Well, just because we can use foul language on the stream doesn't mean we have to, R2. All right, well, happy, happy St. Patrick's Day if I don't talk to you before then. <laughs> yep, I know you will. All right, now, Don, I have someone here who's a... a, a, a 
one of the one of the ensemble cast members of the show who's a little shy. Uh, very shy. Very shy. Wants to meet you. Um, okay. Because he might be a relative. There's there's a little bit of similarity. It seems. Yeah. Um, this is this is Belushi B. Uh, <laughs> and he's a big fan of yours, not just because you're both bees, <laughs> but you know you worked with not just on Pearl Harbor, but you also worked with Steve, who made 1941. You worked with Danny mm -hmm. on Ghostbusters too. Mm -hmm. So it it he was nervous to meet you, but he just wanted to say hello and tell you what a big fan he is. He thinks you're the bee's knees. <laughs> Is there anything else he wants to say? Maybe you should ask. George. Um, He's very shy, Don. He has to whisper the I, things to I George. Can see that. <laughs> I have to say 1941 is... Uh, I, I enjoyed... I really like 1941. There's a lot of good models in it. That, well, there's that too. Yeah. Out those houses. It's, yeah. I, think, I think it's gotten a bad rap out there. Oh, yeah. He says, thank you. you I'm very excited that you like 1941. <laughs> Is it your favorite of the World War II comedies? Yeah, yes. And right next to uh, What Did You Do in the War, Daddy? Yeah. Oh, oh he's all abuzz now. Thank you so much, Don, <laughs> for, for being kind to him because he's one of the more uh, shy characters on our show. But he yeah. just said, don't let, don't let Don leave the show without me saying hello. That's <laughs> an honor to talk to him. So. Oh, well, I'm very glad that you two got to meet. Don, this has been so much fun, and uh, we'll definitely we'll let you know when we're going to do that fundraiser, and we'll uh, we'll get it all figured out. Uh, we, we'd be greatly appreciative of that. Yes, and I think I think people will give a lot of money, especially because of this episode, because it was a lot of fun talking to you. So, well, thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll look for that script, George. I really will. Absolutely. Yeah, we got to do the reading for the charity. <laughs> Be sure. sure to get get to work on those extra. Now we're we're friends. I mean, we've always been friends, but you're friends with Patrick. And with yeah. Watto and with uh, Becky, so that's three yeah. R two units you need to make. You don't need to make. <laughs> <laughs> that's another we nine years. We gotta got about another nine years to go. Yeah, 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 we'll get there. We'll get there. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't I'll know how long it takes. Yeah, yeah you might want to start. Yeah, I'll start. Yeah. Now, yeah. 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 yeah, you got um, the backlog. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Don. Stay safe. Thank Stay you good. Guys. We'll see you soon. Good to see you again, George. All right. Bye, see ya. Take care. Wow. Great to see you, guy. What a guy. A nice show. The show, tonight's show is a nice energy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, 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 relax, that's it. I guess, right? I don't know what else to do. The show feels over. Yeah, I guess that's it. Um, good job uh, booking the show this week. Oh, Patrick. thank you. I mean, you do good every week. Yeah, I know. And Watto, excellent questions and excellent uh, uh, energy as always. Thank you. I try. Yeah. Oh, and Patrick? Mm. Thanks.